How's it going guys? John the Basic Expert here with another solo game video. This time we're going to be using some Scarlet Heroes for some solo gaming. And I'm going to have the setup a little bit different this time around where I'm going to be using Foundry for my solo gaming. I think that will help with, um, I don't know, it'll just make it more, I don't have to have multiple screens, I don't have to roll real dice, I don't have to switch between PDFs. It's going to be a lot smoother you're going to see. So, and hopefully I can show for you the power of Foundry. If you guys are interested in maybe a video series on Foundry, let me know. I might work on that as well. If that interests you, show some tips and tricks and how I use Foundry and some of the things that uh, I've learned in using it um, over the last few months and as it has become my main online uh, tabletop role-playing, virtual tabletop role-playing software. I like it much more than Roll20. So if that interests you, sound off in the comments below about, uh, about that. So we're going to continue our Scarlet Heroes adventure here, and we're going to be using my fighter Rourke. Uh, I used him in the last video, and I was, like I said, used, trying to use Worldographer as like a VTT, along with just rolling real dice and flipping between the PDF and my character sheet. With Foundry, I can have everything in one place, so this will be a lot easier. So with that, uh, let's switch to Foundry. I'll show you how I have stuff set up, and we can start uh, working on it together. We'll start gaming, so let's do it. All right, so we're here in Foundry, and uh, you can see here's my character sheet, uh, my, my character token. If I double click on it, I can bring up my character sheet. I have his attributes. Uh, I'm using the basic fantasy module, which seems to work well enough. And, uh, you know, I got my encumbrance listed here, Frey Die, equipment. Uh, he doesn't have any spells, and then I have some special abilities here, which is very useful. I want to do a 2d8 check in Scarlet Heroes, it'll automatically use that skill and apply the, the bonus to it, which is super, super nice. So, and another nifty thing is in combat here, if I use my longsword, um, it will apply my strength bonus plus my character's attack bonus to the roll. So if we roll a d20, and you can see I got uh, 2 for my attack bonus plus 3. So, uh, very, very cool, and I can also roll for damage as well. So, neat. Uh, I rather, I rather, I rather like all that. So, um, let's see here. Uh, what else is there to look at in here? We got our special abilities. We went over that. Um, oh, this, this is what makes it really neat. Like, I can move my guy around on the map very easily, and what I plan to do with when I discover a location or something, I can go over to the journal entries and uh, create a map note and let's, you know, drop it in here and I can create a journal entry here. And then I can transfer this over to my worldographer map and with all the information and data that I found so that uh, I can start building my setting. Because the neat thing about worldographer is that you can export uh, all of your campaign notes on the map to like a HTML file and then obviously you can print that up or copy and paste it into a document and then I can start making like a full-fledged campaign setting where I have a map, I have points of interest and I have the ability to uh, have information on it. Like if I want to write a setting book through playing my game, this is uh, the best way to do it. So that is, uh, that's what I'm doing here. So we got Roarx selected here. One final thing, too, is that, uh, let's see, let's go over here, and I actually have the Scarlet Heroes rulebook listed right in here. Super neat, super useful. Uh, right here in, in Foundry, I have the PDF, and it works remarkably well. I can scroll to the uh, solo gaming section, and have all of my oracles and, and tables that I want to roll on here as well. Let's make it a little bigger, maybe. Let's, let's uh, zoom in a little bit like that. All right. So, uh, this, oh, there we go. Get rid of that. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty, uh, pretty happy with this and, uh, um, we can, we can start, uh, gaming, I think now. So let's close this and let's close this. I don't need, this. 
And I don't need that. I can always get to it also from my journal here and uh, load the PDF in here if I want to. So, and it will take me back to where I left off, which is quite nice. It remembers where I left off during this game session. So, um, uh, let's, let's see here. I'm going to put uh, some text on the screen. Well, nah, it's fine. Let's, let's just start going here. So, when last we left Rorik, he was, uh, he was uh, trying to break into the city. He wanted to see what was going on in the Lunaris, the southern sultanate. Let me close this. You can see how big my map is here. Uh, this is a huge hex map, and there's a whole, like, section to the other side over here, and then there's a whole, like, tropical subsection down here. I plan on making a, a rather huge setting eventually that I'd love to build out and use. Um, so, this is huge. But this southern sultanate, which is very spread out in this deserty uh, area, has invaded uh, from the south here. They've taken... Uh, they've taken Chilgrave Hold and Candor Keep have, have both fallen, or they bypassed them in some way. And Lunaris has been invaded by the uh, by the Sultanate forces to the south. And Rorik was trying to break in. He was trying to be kind of rebellious, but I'm not sure I want him to continue in doing that. So let's uh, let's. I want to see if there is a horse that I can steal. Is there a horse that I can steal? That is relatively um, easy to to get, and I'm going to say with all the forces around is very likely. So we're going to roll, uh, we're going to roll a d20, and uh, we'll see how likely it is uh, for very likely that uh, there is. So I'm I'm pretty much got a, like a there could be a chance of a complication. It's very unlikely that there's not going to be a horse. Let's use the Oracle and just find out. So three, no but, no horses available. That's weird. Let's do a D6. Uh, one, there is a twist to the relationship between people and the situation. What could that twist be? Um, is the twist that... Like the horses are inside the city. Maybe that's what it is. So let's roll on very likely again. The horses inside the city. Is that why I can't find a horse to steal? And the sultanate forces. 16 appears so. Um. Okay. Well. Is there anyone. Is there any way I could. I could get in. Like I wonder. I can't just bribe. Like, let's look at let's look at the the list of stuff here. So, mm, I think it was in equipment. I think bribes were listed here. Somewhere I thought. I was just looking at something. It was like uh, the costs of various things, and uh, well, okay. Let's let's look for bribe. How much are bribes? Oh, it was right here. Bribe major, bribe minor, five gold pieces. Um, I'm going to try and bribe a guard to see if I can, like, get into the city. Maybe I can bribe a guard. Maybe he'll let me pass as I, as I let in. Because I tried to get in before. I tried to sneak in. I had to, Then I had to fight a bunch of guards in the last game, and it didn't work out too well. So let's give him five gold and see if... Uh, if... Oh, I had 18. It didn't save it. 
Does it not save that? Okay, it did. That was weird. I thought I put 18 in and it didn't save it. Kind of concerning if it doesn't. Maybe... Oh, all this stuff is like... Gone. Human. Male. I think I said he was 22. Still there when I open. Okay, I don't know what what was up with that. Something happened. That was weird. Um, you know what? I think I remade his character sheet once, and then I forgot to put all that in. Something weird happened with it. Uh, so we got eighteen gold. I'm gonna give. I'm gonna try and bribe a guard, and maybe, maybe my skill as a former bandit. So I got two d eight plus uh two. And then, let's see, my constant, my charisma is not great, but, so let's, let's see if maybe my, I'm going to assume my, maybe my bandit skill could like, I know how to bribe people as a bandit. I probably bribed people before. And, uh, let's, let's look at, um, let's look at monsters here. I want us to look at the. Bestiary of foes, and let's look at I think in the human section, Kathleen human, there is a soldier here. And so he's a one hit die thing. So your target number is nine. So my target number is going to be 10. Uh, and I'm given a bribe. Uh, so let's do, we'll do, uh, we'll do uh, two, the band, we'll just, we'll do a straight roll here. See if I can beat 10. All right. So successful, rolled a 18. Um, I'm able to, uh, rolled really well, and that's the best I could possibly do. Uh, so I gave him some gold, and he's let me into the city, so let's, let's, uh, reduce that there. So we're at 13. Uh, he's let me into the city, and, um, now that I'm within the city, is it possible for me to find a horse? Is there, like, a horse about where I can try and pilfer it? Uh, let's go back to our to our general oracles, and we'll go almost certain for this one. Fourteen. So yes. All right. Um, is the is the horse guarded? Let's roll on the unknown. Uh, undo. 20. Yes, uh, the, the, the horse is guarded. So let's go back to our soldiers here. Um, where is my Bisteria monsters? Close this. Go back to human. And we've got, so again, it's going to be 11. I'm going to try my special ability here. Let's say city watch. Like, I'm going to try and convince the guards. Hey, you know, I'll watch the horses. Uh, the sergeant wants to see you. I'll use my, I used to be city watch, so let's try our city watch skill. Again, it's going to be 11. See if I can convince them. Uh, nope. Or 10, it's going to be, it's 9 plus 110. So I did, 9 is the target number. They have a hit die of 1, generally when you add the creature's hit die to the difficulty. So 1 uh, is 10, I just did it. So they just barely believed me. They're probably looking at each other suspiciously, probably because I'm not dressed like one of them, but maybe I say like, ah, you know, I, I rushed over here, I didn't get my uniform on, whatever, you know, I'm, I'm a mercenary, let's say, maybe. Uh, with uh, with you guys, and uh, he told you to to beat. He, he sergeant wants to see you. 
Right. So let's let's uh let's see here. Um am I I I wonder if they're checking people as they exit the the um the uh the, the city here. We should check to see that. General Oracles. So let's let's go with likely. They're probably making sure that people whoever's leaving is supposed to be leaving. Um they probably don't want Let's go with very likely. So we'll roll a d20. 12. So yes, it is guarded. And let's go back to this. Let's see how many guards there are. Uh, 1d6. At the gate, city gate, as I'm trying to leave. Six guards. Um, so I got a horse. Kind of getting towards the exit. And, um, hmm, it's not really sneaking, like what would be a good skill, would any of these skills be useful at like pretending to be, you know, in like no big deal? I'm going to go with, I'll use my, like, I'm going to say my brash rebel skill. Uh, because a rebel would be able to like infiltrate and stuff, so let's let's see if like my ability to blend in with the crowd kind of uh, does this. So I gotta be again ten. And I did it, so they didn't notice me. Uh, I kind of just tip my hat. I'm I'm a uh, I'm leaving this leaving the town. Uh, they let me go, um, and I've got a horse now. So let's add. Equipment, add, and say the horse, and let's look at equipment, because I don't remember how much a horse is worth. I'm assuming it's just like a basic horse. Well, let's look at the horse types here. Equipment. And we're so we got a riding horse and a war horse. So how likely did I get a war horse? Let's ask the oracle. This general oracles. I just grabbed a horse, so let's just see what kind. And let's go with unknown. So I don't know what kind of horse this is. Let's see if it's a war horse or not. I do have a war horse. Sick. Love it. Okay, so war horse one. Um and uh my war horse will help me like carry some of this weight, I think. So that I'm only I only want to carry like my weapons and armor because I realize so if I look at my character sheet here. I lost it. It really didn't save it. That's so annoying. I'm like at 117 pounds, 116 pounds. Uh, I can carry, I think, 120 based on the rules in Scarlet Heroes before I'm encumbered. So, like, I'm only a few pounds away from, um, from being over encumbered, and I don't want that. So, I'd rather have like a horse that I can dump my gear on, which is kind of why I wanted to sneak into the city, and um. And uh, find this stuff. Actually, before I leave, I want to take a look around. Do as I'm leaving the gate. Is there anything of noteworthy that maybe I could tell someone any any information um, that would be useful for any rebellious sort of uh, act? Let's roll a d20. We'll go with uh, unknown. So nine. Nine is no but. Roll a d6 for a but. For a but. Twist in the relationship between people and the situation. 
uh maybe there is like maybe the twist is uh what other let's roll a d20 and then another d20 here we'll roll a d20 see if i can get some stuff here so three so it's gonna be this first one seven so avarice there's some avarice in the town is the avariceness with the rulers of it like what does that mean with unknown yes but okay another complication two an adjustment to the physical environment uh is the adjustment to is the avarice like uh geez i don't know um So like there's a desire for wealth in the city. Um is this desire for wealth from the Sultanate or from like traders within town? Let's roll for unknown. Twelve. So yes, but another complication. Five. A failure of a piece of gear either or either the hero or an NPC. Uh, some kind of gear. Is it... What kind of gear? Is it like... Hmm. There's a desire for wealth, and... Is this... Is this from... Sorry, I messed up here. I can't remember what I said. Is this... Is this avariceness and, and failure of gear for the, the Sultanate forces? Let's go with unknown. Fourteen. Yes, but, okay. Six. So blindly bad or good timing of a sudden event. Maybe there are there unknown, let's say, are, are rebel forces sabotaging their gear and weapons maybe within the town? Maybe that's something I could report to someone else that maybe wants to help free the town from these invaders? Unknown? Twenty, yes. Okay. So, what we've learned here, through our use of the Oracle here on Scarlet Heroes, is that, uh, that the, the forces here, they're dealing with like some rebel forces here in town, um, and I don't really want to hang out with them in here uh, and, and figure that out, but their forces are sabotaging the equipment and weapons of the Sultanate forces, and maybe this is something that's a piece of information that maybe other lords that are obviously at war with the, these southern forces might be interested in knowing they might want to maybe connect with such rebels that would be inside of a town uh an occupied town so insurgent force essentially uh I'm gonna edit this here so i know my max encumbrance let's see max weight 120 pounds all right just so I don't forget that. Um, all right. Well, we have. Let's close this and close this. Oh, how much? Dang it. Um, let's go back to equipment and. Uh, let's look at how much was that war horse worth? I know the value of my horse. Horse, 300 gold pieces. It's quite a... Quite a haul there for stealing that. Um, okay. Well. We are back out. Um, we are back out on the, the main map here. I'm, gonna, I'm going to uh, check it move <laughs> move this stuff let's close out a little bit so we get some space here I'm working on a very small window here um hmm let's which way should we go i think in the last video i said maybe i wanted to look for rebel forces but i don't really think i want to do that i think i want to really explore and maybe do some dungeon delving 
generate some dungeons and have just some general fun solo gaming here. So I don't know if I necessarily want to, uh, if I want to do that. So let's, let's look here. Um, which way do I want to go? This is the Dwarven Stronghold. That one over here. Or should I go explore these, uh, this foresty area here? Oh, I can close that. Lovely. Get that out of the way. Um, if I could explore the forest here, I'm not sure which way I want to go. Um, sure, why not? Let's, let's just start heading towards the forest. So let's go to here. I'm going to go down the road. We'll get down to the road here where it kind of goes across the forest and then we'll we'll see about getting into the into the forest there. Let's roll dice. Gotta roll a D eight for events and a D eight for counter or for what's it called? Uh feature. So this is for This is for, okay, there isn't a wilderness event, and there is no feature there. What is our wilderness event? Let's go back down to the oracles. My kid needed some help with something real quick. Uh, let's look at, let's, what was I going to do? Uh, a wilderness event occurred, and we needed to figure out what that was going to be. So we need to go down to our oracles and wilderness adventures, terrain and wilderness events. Okay. So, uh, let's get rid of this. So if I remember correctly, events, 1d6 for a weather, uh, odd is a weather event and a terrain event is even. So we roll d6. If it's odd, it's a weather event. So three, it is odd. And uh, I think we're in the dry season, so we're going to roll a d12. Six. Heat exhaustion. Can't move for 1d4 days. For three, three days. All right, well. I'm going to do some, uh, let's see, let's look at my, uh, wisdom is minus one. Okay. We're going to try and do some hunting here. Let's see, we'll, we'll do uh bandit two. So it'll be actually be two D eight plus one. I'm going to do it over here. We'll, we'll see. I got to beat nine. Uh, to find 1d4 amounts of rations for the day. And maybe I can find enough to not have to cut into uh, the rest of the, the three days that it took for for me to, to get here. Okay, so it's 10. Let's actually, I want to double check here. Go to Wilderness Adventures. Um... Adjust supplies, so uh, roll an appropriate check, wisdom based, uh, typically 8 for tip, uh, jungles, forests, or coasts, 9 for hills and other uh, uninviting lands, and 10 for deserts and hostile areas. So I would say like it's a 9 on like hills, plains, there might be some small game about, so I find 1d4 days worth of rations. So... Pull a d4. Two days worth of rations. So I'm able to... Let's look at my supplies here. I only have to eat into... Uh, one day's worth of rations. So let's put that down to six. And keep going. So four days pass. 
And, uh, let's, let's create a journal here for myself. Just so I know what's going on and I can kind of like recount this. This is the neat thing about, um, This is my second session, I think. Session two. And uh, we'll say... Um, knock into Norris. Uh, stole a horse. Rebel forces are... Uh, Making life hard for invading forces. Sabotaging gear. Stuck for th three days on the road due to heat. So, four days total so far. I'm going to put this as bullet points. Save it. And it should be here in my journal. Close that, close that. All right. So, that's good. I'm able to find like some some resources here. Let's keep going. So, uh, events one, um, features are at two, just so I have that there and I know what the count is. So we'll roll a D8 for events, D8 for features. So, okay, well, events two and Features one, we have a feature here just down the road here. And let's let's see what this feature is. Oh, I didn't roll for a random encounter. Let's go back. You know there's a we know there's a random encounter up here. Roll no random encounter. Let's roll for each day. Those three days that I was stuck. On the last day, I am having a random encounter. Let's um, let's look and see what that is. So we are in planes, and we'll roll a d20. See what we counter or which is. A horse. I just stole a horse. Um, encounter twist. Wilderness. Let's roll a d20. Five. Uh, I don't think it makes sense for them to be looking at traps. Let's see if they're added towards horses added towards me. Three. Why would the horses want to fight? Let's roll that again. That doesn't make any sense. Six. Predacious, willing to take advantage of those weaker. So these are just jackass horses. I just keep running these asshole horses. Can I just ignore them? Um, I want to try and uh, sneak my way around them. So we'll do uh, minus one. Try and beat nine. I can't leave these horses, apparently. So let's... Um, can I try and calm them? I calm the horses, apparently. Nine is what I need. Uh, let's... So now we'll... This is a stupid encounter. Wild horses that are assholes. Uh, let's... Let's keep going here, and, uh, let's keep looking for what... We got here so we got wilderness terrain and features so 
let's roll to see what we've got here. So we are over here now. After those three days of being stuck in hot sun. And let's roll to see kind of what we find here. We'll roll a d8. Eight. Settlement of some kind. And we'll roll a d10. Ten. Uh, dungeon types. So we got to look at dungeons. All right, so what kind of dungeon is here? This is kind of what I wanted. I wanted to just sort of get get a horse, get some stuff, and like, let's do some exploring, some adventure. So we'll roll a d10, which will tell me what column to roll on. Eight, so a temple of some kind. Roll a d12. Five, so... Heretic hideout. Some kind of heretic hideout is here. Let's, um, I'm gonna move this over to here, move this here, and let's get to our uh, journal notes here and we'll add map note. Create a school corresponding journal entry. Heretic hideout. Close this and I can actually change the icon. Let's make it a uh, know what would be an appropriate icon for Let's do a house. And see, I got a house here, and then if I double click on it, it'll take me to the journal, and then we can start journaling in here about like what is in um what is in this hideout. So let's see. So it is a heretic hideout. Common inhabitants. So uh I'm going to change the format of this to heading to common inhabitants basic uh, let's see roll a d20 to figure out what kind of common inhabitants are in this 11 tide cult whatever that means Uh, make it bold. Hide cult. And, uh, minion. Let's see. Minion is going to be another d20 roll. Ten. Creeper. I don't know what that is. Uh, elite. What's neat about this is like if I want to take this to the table, the stat blocks in um within this will work with like basic fantasy or rule cyclopedia or anything like that, and I can sort of, I can I can have my my in, I, without too much conversion really, I can have my players do this same exact dungeon with the same monsters that are in this book. And uh, and have them have them uh, run this dungeon as well. Let's roll another d20. Nineteen. Uh, misshapen Hulk. Misshapen Hulk is the elite boss. Another d20. Five, so we have a shoe, so orc chieftain. Orc chieftain. 
I'm going to change this to make this make more sense. It's going to be cultists orcs. It's going to be like some crazy like like orc uh cult, which is probably really bad. Like I don't know what what orcs would worship, but it's probably pretty terrible. Uh let's see if there's a mage in here, so we'll d20. Two. Raven Mage. Ray oh. Mage. Raven Mage. Yeah. Any civilians in here? I'm just gonna do everything here just for the sake of rolling. I don't have to do everything, but I kinda want to. Seven. Seven is... Mates, edible prison prisoners. Edible prisoners. Alright. Obviously, Rorik probably wouldn't know this, but... You know, it's good to, um, it's good to figure this stuff out. Uh, oh, we need to roll for, uh, location size, so we'll roll a d12 for size. 10. Which is going to be 1d12 plus 10 locations. 1d12 plus 10 locations. This is how many locations will be in this dungeon. 4. 14! Alright, so... Locations. I'm going to change this here. I'll make it... I don't... I'm, I'm kind of being a little too nice with my layout here. Um, that's how many rooms there are, and dungeon threat adjustment. So let's roll two d six. See what we got here. Four. A dangerous power lurks within. The threat is equal to the PC's level, but after half. After half the rooms are explored, it jumps by one. So, I'm going to just copy that. Here. Threat level. And, uh, let's make that heading to threat level. Um... He's bold. I'm a stickler for like layout. I want it to look nice. The so threat level, a dangerous power looks within the threat level is equal to mine, so it's gonna be threat level two. Um I'm gonna put that up here. Two. EL two. Just so I have a basic uh basic understanding of what it is in there. And then we'll start rolling for what the locations are in here as as uh, as he explores. I'm not sure I'll be able to get through all of it in this uh, this game session, but we'll we'll see what it is. I don't want this video to be overly long, but I don't want to cut it too short without getting to some action here. Um, so we'll save that, close that journal, and uh, close. And let's move this back. I want to change this. I want to change this to uh, change it to a temple because it is cultists. So like I feel like the the temple sort of makes it uh, look makes me realize more what it, what it is here. That we have so 
go. All right, we're here. We got a we got a heretic hideout there. And what I'll do is I'll well, later I'll transfer this all over to my other notes so I can figure it out. Or I might just leave it in here. Who knows? Um. So let's let's try and get in. Is it's kind of like near the near the side. It must be like an abandoned. Is it? Let's go back to the general oracles. Um. Here. And let's roll a d20. Like, is this, uh, is this just like an abandoned temple or structure that's on the side of the road? Like, how far? I mean, each hex is 24 miles. So, like, during my exploration, could have. Well, yes, but a twist in the relationship between the people involved situation so it's some kind of orcish cult that exists somewhere within this 24 mile hex and uh, well before i even get to there let's roll let's roll a d6 to see if there's an encounter no no encounter here let's go in Let's go into this um into this this dungeon here. Let's see what's what's within. So go back to dungeon adventures. And the one thing to keep in mind here with this is dungeon turn. Um So yeah, when I enter a room and then leave, on a result of 1 to 8, the next room is in uh, that direction with 1 being red is northwest, 2 is north, uh, 3 is northeast, 4 is east, and so forth. So it's kind of like, it's kind of like it goes from 1 to at, going like around the clock, and then 9 and 10 is like whatever would make sense to make the most compact dungeon. And I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to close this and open up scenes here. I want to create a new scene. And we're going to call this. Orcish Heretic Hideout. Great scene and I don't really care about so I'm gonna I'm not gonna be using it kind of as a as a battle square per se. It doesn't really matter to me. Um, let's make it white and Yeah, we'll make it white. Easy to see. And save changes. All right. So. Can't make it narrow. Being super dumb. All right. Well, I'm going to move this over here. We're going to move this over here. And essentially what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have like, I'm going to be drawing rooms like a dry erase board on this pretty much. And that will help me define like what is going to be in here. So I know I have 14 locations within this dungeon. And uh, let's let's start entering it and use the rules here to see what we got uh, as far as, as the what's what's in it so it's a temple of some sort orcs orcs live here get the chat back up so i can do my dice rolls put that over here for now and uh let's roll a d20 to see like what is this first room 
18, uh, a vault. They just have their vault at the front. These orcs are not very smart, but I'm going to go with the flow of the rolls here. And so um, that's what we'll do. So here, um, the heck? Uh, whatever. Text. Vault. And let's make that black. Update drawing. Here. And. There's a vault here. Okay. Let's get our guy. So I have a sense of space where he's at and what I'm where where he's at within the dungeon. So it just kind of represents a room. I don't even care about room size or anything like that. Scarlet Heroes doesn't seem to really care about that. But I'm gonna essentially make like bubbles connected by lines to kind of show where these dungeons are, where these rooms are in relation to each other spatially. And then later, if I want to go back and make a dungeon map out of this, like a proper dungeon map, I, I can. And I can bring that to the table if I want to run my players through this dungeon here. So we have a vault here. Let's go back to this. So it's a vault. And is there an encounter? Uh, we roll a d10. Roll a d10. Nine. So, yes, there is an encounter. Um, let's roll our 3d6 to see what kind of, of encounter this is. So, we got eight. 1d4 plus threat hit dice worth of foes numbering several minions or civilians and possibly an elite. So 1d4 plus 2 roll. So 4. There are 4 foes in here. Oh, and I should know, I'm going to leave my horse at the entrance. Like, I'm going to hide my horse um, out there. Uh, let's actually do a roll for that like how well did I hide my horse probably not too great those seven so if someone wants to come along and try and find my horse I didn't hide it very well apparently uh, Rorik is not the smartest individual so um yeah we have so it was eight minions or civilians and possibly an elite so what were the minions in here? they were cultists which are probably like just regular orcs and there's four of them i'm just going to say four for the sake of simplicity and we will go to this And they are listed under the shoe because it has a there is an implied setting when I'm not using, but it is a cool setting. Ooh, bugbear orc. All right, it's four of these guys in here. Uh, they have a morale eight, hit dice one. So four of them in here. What was the elite? I don't remember what the elite was. Misshapen Hulk. Is that like a is that like an actual creature in here? Um, 
all right. Well, for it's an elite, and it will have two hit die. So AC five, attack plus threat, damage one d ten, movement thirty. Okay. I'm going to say that there is um, an elite and two, so there's this misshapen hulk creature, hulkish creature, and two orcs that are there. And so, um, let's, I'm going to copy this into, can, there we go. into the heretic hideout thing here and we'll have a that way i have uh this here so hit dice threat ac5 save it that way i have it and i can bring it up um And I guess um, we got to fight this thing. So, are they doing anything? No. Okay. All right. Well, uh, I'm facing off against two orcs, and this. Uh, let's roll, I guess, for surprise. Able to surprise them? Am I surprised? Where is too many windows now? Uh, let's roll a d6 for me. Roll a d6 for me. Five. I'm not surprised. Is orc one surprised? No. Two. Oh. And the thing. All right. So. Hero gets to go first in Scarlet Heroes, so let's um, let's just run in and uh, I'm gonna start killing these things. So let me look at my character sheet. Combat. I'm going to swing and see if I can maybe take out the. So it's AC five. Let's see if I can take out the um, the big. Evil thing first. Oh. oh, wait. That's not right. I get a plus three because of my strength. So I don't know why that. See if that fix. Did that fix it? It did. We'll still go with this one. I missed. I'm going to roll my Frey Die, which is a D8. See if I can cause damage to anything. So three. And, um... Three is going to be uh, one hit die of damage. So one of the orcs is dead. We got one orc. And this shambling creature, Hulk, misshapen mass. Probably one of the foul things that they've created within this temple. And, uh, let's, I guess it's their turn. Um, so it's going to be attack plus two. Let's, let's deal with the evil creature first. Yeah, that's what I want to see. <laughs> All that 18 coming in. I'm like, no, thank you. Uh, so four plus my AC of three is seven. That doesn't be 20. So he doesn't, doesn't hit Scarlet Hero Heroes uses descending AC. Uh, so that's good. Um, let's go with the other orc. And he is... Let's go with... It's going to take forever to find it that way. I'm better off just looking for it here. Just scroll into the page, which seems to be a general theme. Um, orc. 
What is his attack? What weapon plus one? What weapon? I'm gonna just say they have like some kind of d6 damage weapon, spear or short sword or something like that. Uh, so attack weapon plus one. So he's going to have a d20 plus one. Dang, he hits me. So d6. Six. So but I forgot to get, I get rid of that plus one. I wish it didn't keep that there. So let's look here at combat. I want to look at that. So six is two points of damage to Ark. Not looking good. My character sheet here. So I'm at 11. Eh, it's okay. I'm doing okay. 11. And, uh... So, my turn again. Uh, let's see here. Um, I'm going to attack that shambling beast again. I feel like I need to try and take that thing out. So, 17... Plus, it has an AC of 5. That will hit. And so let's roll for damage. I think I killed that bastard. Heck yeah. Uh, hit die is 2. We look at the damage here. Um, we look at the damage here. I rolled a 10, so 4 points. Like, I slayed that thing. Let's roll our fray die, see if we can take out the other orc in the process as well. Two, I do. So, we slay the orc, and um, let's look at healing. So, the combat's over. And Uh, every yo can make a few minutes after battle or another injury to bandage their wounds and catch their breath. At these times, a hero can heal up to two hit points of damage inflicted in their most recent fray or misadventure. This healing can't mend older wounds, damage inflicted by defying death, or, or other taxes on or luck and vitality. Uh, alright, so I can actually... I'm back at 13. That's good. And... Let's look at um, monsters here and go back and look at what kind of treasure work we'll have. Um, he will have treasure H2, H3 in the air, I guess. So let's go look at our treasure hordes, trove types. So he has a... We'll go with H2. So we got 2d6 GP on them. Nice, 12. Right? I like that. So that puts us at 25 gold um 25% chance of one cheap jewelry nope and let's do the second guy does a second orc have any jewelry it does of one cheap jewelry so let's let's look at the cheap jewelry down here Cheap is going to be 1d10 times 10. So a 10 gold piece worth jewelry. And we'll roll a d12 to see what kind of jewelry we have on him. 
six, which is a bracelet worth 10 gold pieces. So add bracelet, bracelet, price 10 GP. Perfect. And uh, go back and look at grove types here. So we were at H2. 5% chance of costly jewelry. I don't think I'm going to find that on them, on them, but we'll see. Nope. Nope. All right. Well, it's something. There could, there is going to be treasure in the room because there was an encounter here. Um, so we'll go back to the solo game rules here. And because, so let's look for if there's treasure in here. If their treasure is, could be hidden. There's a plus three to the roll because uh, an encounter was present. So we're going to roll a d10. I'm going to add three. See what we get. Four. So there's nothing in this room. Is there a hazard? Let's see. Uh, we'll roll a d10. If, tre if treasure but no encounter, roll plus. Okay, so I just got to roll a single d10. On a 10, there's some kind of hazard in this room. Search about. No hazard, and is there a feature? Uh, if no encounter, treasure, or hazard, add plus one. So, is there some kind of special feature in this room? Nine. Okay, there is. Roll a d8. Five. A dangerous intruder or beast who has entered the site. Um, okay, well. Creature motivation? Let's see what the creature's motivation is. One. Get out of the dungeon alive. Hmm. I should look to see what their uh, obedience. So, D4. Or a rebel or hostile group opposed to the location's ruler. Okay, well, I get, I get, this is interesting to use. Gotta, gotta use that here. Uh, give it a special ability for a monster. That's cool. I forgot about that. And you can have it do what their first round of action of combat is. Um, that's neat. Okay, I gotta remember that for the next encounter. Um, so I guess, like, as soon as, as soon as, uh, as soon as I, maybe during the conflict, like a beast just sort of jumps out and flees out of the dungeon it was trying to get out. Uh, let's close this. Wanna wanna see my uh, solo journal here and like let's look at what I have so far. Fourth day found a temple of weird medical orcs. Have strange shapen there. Uh, 
Okay, let's go back to close this. Uh, it's funny that uh, this works within this. Close this. Close this. Close this. It's out of the way. Close. Uh, we'll leave that up for now. Close. Close this. All right. So I'm gonna say. Uh, I'm gonna add some notes here, just like right on the screen for like what I encountered, here because I want to know. Two orcs, one misshapen hulk. That way I know what is within this room. All right, so now to see what's next, let's go back up to this dungeon view. And I should probably need to write this down here. Just so I can like see here. So we're gonna roll to see like what direction the next room is. Uh, and again, there's 14, 14 uh, rooms within this, and uh, I'm going to say I came in through this way. This is the entrance here. Let's go back over here, and let's roll some dice, see what is what direction it's going to go. Using the rules here. Where's the next room? Six. So six is going to be the way I, it's going to like loop around the way I came. It's weird. All right. Well, that's what it says. So So the next room is going to kind of be to the south here. And I'll go to a second room. And what will that room be? So we will roll again on this, a d20. 18. It will be another vault. <laughs> uh, weird. Move this here. All right, so text, let's make it black. Another vault of some sort. Maybe it's like some back entrance into the into the the area, I guess, you know? To make this square. And, um, we got that goes to the vault. Uh, what is within here? So let's actually move our guy. So I'm in this room now. He moves across. Is there an encounter? Roll a d8. Come on. No encounter. Is there treasure? Uh, H is hidden if treasure, but no encounter. Add plus three to that. So. I'm running. I'm rolling the wrong dice. Let's start over. I'm rolling. Supposed to be rolling d d tens here. So encounter. Eight. <laughs> Yes, another encounter. Uh, let's roll our 3d6. See what we encounter in here. 8. 1d4 plus threat. Hit dice worth of foes, numbering several minions and civilians, and possibly an elite. 
Um, right. So we got 1d4 plus 2. 4. Let's just say there's 4 orcs in here for the sake of simplicity. I don't feel like they'd keep their their food source because they, they apparently use their food source for whatever whatever non-combatant I'm gonna find in here. Um they they uh are probably not gonna keep them by the entrance where they can run away. So I'm thinking they're gonna be further within the dungeon. So we just gotta see what happens here. Alright, well four orcs. I guess we'll, uh, go back up here. And, uh, are they surprised? No. Am I surprised? No. Alright, well, I'm just gonna rush in again and attack these guys. <clears throat> Uh, where's the character sheet up? So 16 plus 6 is 22. That will hit. So we will roll for damage on one of these guys. He dead. We will roll our fray die as well. <laughs> nice. So, what is that? Uh, so seven. That's two points. So, like one one orc is left. These guys are not doing too hot. It's like rush in and jack them up. It's their turn. Let's give them a morale check. This last guy, is he going to run away? Five. He's going to stay, surprisingly. He's going to try and attack me with a plus one. He hits. They have a d6. Two, one point of damage. Not too bad. My turn. I'm going to swing at this asshole one more time. Miss. Uh, yeah, that's gonna miss. But I'm gonna roll my fray die. I get to roll my fray die every turn. For a two, which is one point, and he's dead anyway. So I slow slayed, slew, um, that guy. And uh, we will. Let's see. Let's let's notate what we got in here. Now. Four orcs are in here. And they are going to have the treasure on them. So I want to double check what that means with the seas. I forget. I'm stupid. Um, creating your own monsters, special abilities, morale. Whatever. I'm gonna still stick stick with H two for for these guys. It's just easier that way. Um. Mouse scroll is totally broken. I got this Razer Essentials mouse and it's complete trash. Don't buy it. I'm gonna have to buy a new mouse again because this one just sucks. So let's see how much we have. Uh, this is four, 46 worth of uh, gold on them. 11. Add. Going to be 36. Uh, 
25% chance of cheap jewelry on each one. One cheap jewel. So let's roll first one. No, no jewelry. No jewelry on the second one. Third one. No jewelry. These guys are poor. And no jewelry. And then a 5% chance for not cheap jewelry. 76 is not going to do it. Costly jewelry. One more, uh, three more times. Nope. Third one. Nope. And the final one. 13. One of them does have costly jewelry on them. Sweet. So, jewelry, 1d6 times 100 gold pieces. Uh, I like that. One, 100 gold piece, piece of jewelry. Let's see a d12 here. So four, a bangle. A bangle, let's roll a d6. Two, jeweled with. Uh, where's oh gemstone variety? Let's roll. It's gonna be a costly one, so let's roll a d12. Seven. Jadeite. All right. Add that to this. How you spell it? J A D E I T E. Jadeite. I already have it. Price 100 GP. That's great. Finding jewelry in old school games is just the best because you find a high value item that is worth a minimal amount of gold. And that means that, um, that means that you can, you can, uh, you're able to get more wealth. And this doesn't use gold as XP. I guess I could do that. Um, and I thought about doing that. But, um, I'm going to probably keep doing it the way it is just because it's simple. Less things to keep track of. But within your typical old school game, it's nice to have something that is, uh, that, that is, can get you a lot of XP, but not going to take up a lot of encumbrance, a lot of weight on your, on your character. So let's, let's finish doing this here. Let's go back to, uh, this page. Because we need to... So there was an encounter. Uh, plus 3 to the treasure roll. I'm going to roll a d10. Plus 3. Roll. 9? Uh, the treasure is hidden. So I'm able to find some hidden treasure. If no encounter or treasure or hazard... Okay. Plus three to the hazard roll. Oh no. Uh, so let's let's roll to see if there's a hazard in here. There's no plus to it, but let's just see. No, no hazard. Okay, let's look for the treasure found. 3d6. Three Eleven. Standard treasure trove for whatever encounter is present. If no encounter, trove M1 in the room. In room content. So I already got my treasure. I got the standard treasure. Nothing nothing spectacular. That kind of sucks. Uh, is there a feature? 
Seven. No, no particular feature here. Uh, I'm going to add another note here. Or. Beast. Runs out of. Just, just in case, like, I ever want to, like, bring my players into this dungeon. Um, they have a series of events that occur here and I can I can do them so cool I think I'm starting to run out of time the video is already one hour and a half so I think I'm going to end the session here what's nice is it leaves off where wherever it would go and I'm going to I'm going to roll just to see what direction I need to go for the next room. So two is to the north. And so that's going to be this way. So it kind of goes off over here. Let's see what kind of room it is. It's going to be another vault watch. Keep rolling 18s. <laughs> uh, it's 18, another vault. So uh, another vault here. That's great. I love that. That's just awesome. And let's... Get that. Let's just, let's do one more. We'll do one more. So let's roll for the encounter. If there's an encounter. Seven, there's no encounter. Is there treasure? Uh, let's roll a d10. Oh, sorry, that's supposed to be... Rolled the wrong die. There is an encounter. Great! Great. Is there treasure? Plus three to the treasure roll, so seven. Uh, plus three is ten, so yes, there's treasure. Um, hazard. No hazard, and is there a feature? Nine, there is a feature. Let's, um, let's look at the feature, the nature of the feature here. Before we do the encounter, four, a prisoner or victim of the dungeon inhabitant. So let's say there's some people in here that are the food of the orcs, because it says they use them for food. Uh, let's see the let's resolve the encounter and one more encounter uh, Seven one d4 plus threat hit dice worth of foes numbering several minions civilian possibly So one d4 plus two Five Let's say there's a uh, No, let's let's go back up to general oracles. I want to ask it: Is there are more orcs than prisoners in this room? And we'll go with unknown. Yes. So let's just say there's three, uh, four orcs, one prisoner. So, let's go back to the dungeon adventures. Although I know what the orcs are, they have an AC of, oh, uh, let's double check, I don't remember what AC is. Uh, AC is 6, so morale 8, let's go back to 
this this page here. AC6, hit die one. Am I surprised? No. Are any of them surprised? Two of them are surprised. So, cool. Doesn't matter. I'm rushing in. Going to attack sword. I forgot to heal after that last um, let's go back to combat here. I'm going to rush in. I'm going to attack with my sword on one of the orcs. And lucky me, 21 will hit. I roll a d8 for damage. Oh, actually, let's get rid of that. Let's do it this way. So four, I believe, is... Four is one point. So I slay one. I'm going to roll my ice. I slay three. I'm going to say I slay three orcs. My fray die. One orc left. Uh, his turn. He's going to do a morale check. They have a morale of eight. Ten. So he's running away. I think I'm supposed to do morale checks on 2d8. I'll have to look up the rule later if I remember correctly because... Scarlet Heroes is weird in that where it has some old school aspects to it, but at the same time, it also doesn't. So, um, the 8 for Orc seems about right in line with, like, the tip of the bell curve of, like, what you're going to average for uh, 2d6. So, I'm going to assume morale is still on 2d6, and I think the only thing that's different is skills are on 2d8, but we'll see. So, the Orc is running away. I'm going to try... He's going to try and turn, and uh, I'm going to chase him down. I'm going to see if I can smack him before he, he tries to get away, because I don't want him telling. I don't need him telling anyone about... Oh. Miss. Or oh, that's enough to kill him. So I slay him. I'm going to untie the civilian that's in there that's like their food source. Looks like they probably treated him poorly. And um, I'm going to tell them, like, hey, you know, there's my horse outside there um he go i'll tell him where my horse is whoever this person is uh well let's let's go back to the oracles here roll d20 nine is a human um Let's roll a 50% chance of it being male or female. So it's a female. And let's, I'm going to tell this female, I'm going to be like, look, my horse is um, human female. My horse is just out here. I'm going to tell her where I hit it. Uh, go out there, wait for me by my horse. Uh, there should be like rations and supplies in there and whatnot. Uh, feed yourself, um, help yourself. Wait for me there, and I will get you back to safety. And, uh, let's see. Do I have any, would any of my special abilities? I'm going to say sergeant. Well, I want to do it as straight to. So she listens, she like nods, heads back out towards the dungeon. And I say like I gotta I'm gonna keep looking, I'm gonna keep exploring within this place to see what's here. Put my guy there, and uh let's go back to here. We will fill this in. Say four orcs. With one human female prisoner. That is what is in this room. All right. We'll end it here, this session here. I feel like that's long enough. This video is already over an hour and a half. And I'll update my own journal here in a second with, um, with
what it is that I've got here. Well, let's just do it now. Bought more works. Rescued human female. Sent her back to my horse. Like, because at least if someone's there, like, someone can watch my horse too while I'm in the, this dungeon. So, save it. Close. 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 So, yeah, I think that's going to do it for this. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I rather like solo gaming in Foundry. I think it works out pretty well with Scarlet Heroes. I love that I can put the PDF for this lovely book within, um, within Foundry itself and sort of, like, play it. I really, I've really come to enjoy solo gaming. Um, I, not that it's going to be the focus of this channel, but I'm going to talk about other things as well. But it's just um, it's a lot of fun. I think it's super useful to to use this. I, you know, last week's video really talked about this, and um, you know, I, 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 I love it. I think it's a lot of fun. I know some people don't like their solo gaming. They, they don't like doing this, but. I think this could be a very useful tool for um, world building and designing dungeons. Because now I could go back once I go through all this. This dungeon has fourteen rooms. I'm at. I found three of them. Once I go through this uh, and, and lay it out properly, like I can lay this out in a way that like makes sense for like a dungeon map and like bring it to my players and, and run it in a more traditional, uh, traditional way if I if I wish. So. That's going to do it for this video, guys. If you like this kind of content, please like, subscribe, share. Uh, more more to come. I think we're going to be pig piggybacking back and forth with solo gaming videos. Uh, the next one will be probably the One Ring 2nd Edition. I'm going to go jump back to that. It's probably going to be within Foundry as well. And uh, see what uh, Targon, the Ranger, is doing within Middle-Earth. So... Yeah, if you like this channel, you like what I do, uh, you can support on Subscribestar or Gilded on my Gilded server. That's a really cool place. Or right here on YouTube. Links to all that are down below. Links to Scarlet Heroes will be below as well. I highly recommend you pick it up, not just as a solo gaming game, but as a DM tool. Like You can see the tables that I have in there. Those are fantastic tables you can use at your regular game that you're running for other players. You don't have to be running Scarlet Heroes to be using the tables in the back of that book as a DM tool. Uh, so, yeah, check out Scarlet Heroes. Uh, again, like, subscribe. It means a whole lot to me. I've broken 2K subscribers, and it means a whole lot that people care about the, this kind of content that I'm doing. And this, you know, old-school gaming mentality, old-school mode of play. I, my hope with these videos, especially these solo gaming videos like Scarlet Heroes, is to show the type of game that I run at my table, which is... A very sandbox game where I don't know what's going to happen. And I think solo gaming, especially something with like Scarlet Heroes or something like that, can really teach you to be a really good dungeon master for a solo game style game. And so, you know, I, I, people say like, oh, the kind of game you run is impossible. You can't run it. You get burnt out. Trust me, you don't. You do it just like what I've done here, and you're going to have loads of fun at the table. It's lots of fun. So, that's going to do it for this video, guys. Uh, I don't know what the next video is going to be about, but it will hopefully be good. Hopefully you enjoy it, and I'll talk to you guys later. Peace out.